Welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete Stack and this is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what to do or what to look for when you are looking for your very first canoe. Or maybe it's not your first canoe but you're just not even sure what to look for exactly. And that's what we're going to be talking about today because I went through this and I've got a few things I can let you know about. The first thing before we even get started, just want you guys to know if you want to see more tutorials, product reviews, and trip documentaries, please do give me a like and a subscribe. No skin off your back, helps me out greatly, and you will never miss an episode. We uh, come to you about once a week, and uh, we hope to do that for like ever. All right, so right into the topic. We're looking at, at uh, how to find the right canoe for you. Not necessarily the best canoe in the world, but the one that you want. And what we're gonna be looking at is four different things to consider within a couple of categories that you'll want to consider as well. All right, so the first thing that we're talking about is hull shape. And by hull shape, I mean if you were to cut the canoe in half and look at it that way, not from the side, but from the end, cut it in half, what does the shape of the hull look like this way? Um, so some of them go down like a V, and others just, just go straight around. Some of them have a, a keel. So there's a couple of different factors that we'll want to consider. The next thing we want to consider is the idea of rocker. And rocker, if you don't already know what it is, we do have articles about this on our blog at ruggedoutdoorsguide.com. But while you're here, I'll tell you what rocker is. If you were to look at the canoe from the side, so you see that the one tip is here, one tip is here, and you see the whole canoe in the middle. Does it do this? Like, does it bow? Or from tip to tip, is it almost straight across? If it does this, that, that's called lots of rocker. And if it just goes straight across, or almost straight across from tip to tip, that is called minimal or no rocker. Very important concept in choosing the right canoe for you. Another thing that we're gonna be talking about is length of canoe. Length does matter. It's not just that the shorter the canoe is, the cuter it is. No, there's factors that are affected by the length. And we, again, we have articles about that. Um, just by way of example, a longer canoe actually moves faster because the canoe itself makes a very small wave and it stays within that wave, but larger waves move faster. Right? That's why the big, huge waves in the ocean, surfers can go down them because they're moving so fast, but the little ripples like this on the water, you can't surf on them, not just because they're not tall enough, but they're just, even if they were this tall, they're not moving fast enough. So the longer the canoe, the faster it moves because it moves within its own larger wave. And the other issue to consider is material. Material is hugely important. When you're portaging, do you want to carry something super heavy where it takes two people huffing and puffing or one person um, not even breathing hardly at all because it's so light. It's a 30 pound canoe that you have on your shoulders. Well, wouldn't we all like that? But as you can imagine with every positive thing, there is a kind of a compromise, something you're giving up and it's a negative thing in another scenario. Like a light canoe, great for portaging, but you don't want that canoe when you're in rapids on a river because it'll bust up because it's so light and brittle, like very thin ultralight Kevlar. You don't want that. You want a really heavy, brutal canoe to carry, but man, it's gonna smash in those rocks, bend and keep on going. So you see what I mean? There's a compromise. This is good here, but it's bad there and vice versa. Okay, so having said that, we are talking about three different things that most people, I would say 99% of people, will want to focus on one of these activities. And so canoes are made for one of these three activities. And they are, number one, recreation. So that's just kicking around the dock at the cottage and maybe stuff like, you know, fishing around the dock or on, on the lake near the cottage or uh, perhaps hunting, maybe something wide and stable, maybe photography. All right, so these are all sort of recreational activities that you might want to canoe for. The other, uh, that would be number one. Number two would be whitewater canoeing. Whitewater, it requires a completely different canoe from your recreational canoe. It requires a canoe with lots of rocker because rocker 
allows you to steer your canoe a lot better. And you want to, you want to be able to steer it between the rocks and, and to, to you know, point it where it needs to go down the rapids. So you need that. You also need a material that's really, really tough. All right, so we'll talk about that in a second. I get carried away. I want to tell you all about it right away. The third thing that we're talking about uh, or a category that you'll want to consider is lake water tripping on a lake that we're on like this now um, and you're going from one portage to another. Really important to have a canoe that is made for that purpose. If not, you're going to enjoy your trip a little less. All right, so real quick, what do you want in a recreational canoe? If you're looking for recreation and you're just wanting something to, to use around the cottage, what you'll want is a wide canoe, as wide as possible. And I'm not going to go into all the details and specifications. I'm just generalizing here and then you can do your own research. We've got tons of articles on our website and videos that will help you as well. So for recreation, we want a wide canoe, um, 35 inch beam at the widest part, maybe even wider, uh, and a flat bottom. So uh, the, the hull shape, the sides, and then it goes like this. Whoop. It's just flat along the bottom and then the sides come up. That is very stable initially. So that means that you can stand up and there's no problem. So you can have a, a camera tripod along with you standing and it's all good. All right, now they, those are not efficient canoes for long distance travel. Neither are they great for white water because they're usually made of materials like plastic or fiberglass, maybe aluminum. They're heavy, they're awkward, the canoe itself is not efficient through the water, but it's stable. That's the, the gist of a recreational canoe. They're also less expensive. They're probably the least expensive, well they are the least expensive in our three categories. For white water, you're looking at a canoe that's probably about 14 to 16 feet long. They do come in shorter models for solo canoeists and playboats. There's a lot of different canoes within white water, but we're just generalizing, let's say, a tandem canoe for you and a partner going down a reasonable river. We're not talking waterfalls here. We're talking, you know, class one to four rapids or something like that. And you want a specialized material. You want something like... Uh, Royal X is a classic one that, that's been made for years and years. It's, it's a material that can smash against a rock, crumple, even bend, and then you can pull it off and it'll almost come back to the, the original shape without a hole or anything in it. So um, they don't make Royal X anymore. You can still find some, but another material that they do make now is called T Form X. So it's sort of like that, and there are a few others, but if you're looking for a whitewater canoe, you'll want to look into that and ask your uh, retailer or somebody who's <laughs> selling it to you, what, what is it made out of, and then do a quick Google search and check out what the material is. Is it going to work? You can get away with aluminum. Um, it can take a pounding. You, that's a good thing, but there is a chance that if you really do a number with it and wrap it around a rock or a log, it, it won't get a hole in it and sink, but it really won't bounce back to its original shape. So that can be a problem. That's why it's probably the least expensive of this category of whitewater canoes. You're also looking at a hull shape of a shallow arch and no keel. Keels, a keel is that thing down the center of your, your boat. Any boat has it. Sailboats have big long ones that go down in the water. And the idea is that it helps you go straight and, um, and it helps also for stability. But the problem is with a whitewater canoe, you don't want to be helped to go straight. You, all you're doing is turning when you're in the rapids and so you don't want any sort of a keel to keep you on track. Okay, and the final category we're talking about is lake tripping. And this is what we do the most here. This is what I do. That's what this canoe is. You're looking at the lightest material possible. Something like Kevlar is really common. You can do fiberglass and aluminum and plastic, but you'll be sorry if you're going on long trips because they're just so heavy and you don't need that. So if you have the budget, or even if you don't, I might save up a little bit for it and get a Kevlar canoe. If you have even more money to spend, get a carbon composite canoe, even lighter. So that's, that's super important in this category of lake water um, tripping canoes. You're also looking at a shallow arch as well, similar to the um, whitewater canoes I just mentioned in terms of the hull shape cross section. And uh, it may or may not have a keel on it. I have a 17-foot um, a Winona Kevlar canoe. It does not have a keel on it, but it wouldn't bother me if it did 
because again, a keel helps you stay on track, travel straight, and uh, that's kind of what you want when you're on a lake. Um, this canoe for lake water tripping also has very little rocker. All right, a whitewater canoe will have a lot more rocker. A recreational canoe will have a little more rocker. A lake water tripping canoe will have almost no rocker. Again, a rocker helps for turning. This does not need to be turned. On a lake, you want to go from point A to point B, which is about six miles that way, and you go boom in a straight line, more or less. You know what I'm talking about. So you don't really need to do a lot of quick turning. You just want efficiency and just straight like a bullet through the water like a torpedo. That's what this canoe does the best. Lake water tripping canoes are meant for that purpose. Remember what we talked about length? Longer is faster. So this is the longest type of a canoe. Unlike a whitewater canoe, you're not really looking for speed to go down the rapids. That's why they're 14 to 16 feet for a tandem. For lake water tripping, you're looking at at least six, uh, 16 feet. Some of them are 22 feet even long. Uh, this one is 17 feet. So these are all meant to be fast and efficient. Remember, they ride their own wave and the longer the wave, the bigger the wave, the faster it goes. So a, a longer canoe, again, is gonna be faster. The final thing I'll say about lake water canoes, because of their efficiency, the stability is not initial stability, meaning it doesn't have a flat bottom and it doesn't feel really sturdy at, at, the, at the beginning. If you were to stand up in a recreational canoe, you could. You could stand up and it'd be like, okay, this is, this is good. You know, like a sports pal. You've all heard of those probably. Those things are a monsters. To you can you can hardly you can dance in those things because they have a large, wide, flat bottom. But this canoe and other good, efficient lake water tripping canoes have a shallow arch, so it's not flat across the bottom. It's a a bit of an arch, which means when you stand up in this canoe, whoa, <laughs> you're going to feel like you're going to wipe out right away. That's called initial, I should say, secondary stability. The initial stability when you stand up, it doesn't feel very stable, but if you try to tip it way over, if you try to lean over, you're going to find that it doesn't tip over that easily. You have to go way over in order for it to actually go over, and that's how these are meant. They're built that way because a flat bottom boat is not as efficient. It's not as torpedo-like as it goes flying through the water. You want one of these, you want a lake water tripping canoe for sure if that's your main purpose. And I know there's a lot of you out there who do pretty much just lake water tripping. All right, before we go, I got one last thing to tell you, and that is that some people have asked me, is there no such thing as a canoe that does like all of those things really well? Well, my question to you would be, is there one vehicle that does all things well? Is it a minivan? Well, a minivan's not really a cool looking sports car, is it? No, neither is a minivan a bus that can carry 40 people. It doesn't do any of those things well, but what it does is it, it kind of finds a good average and it does a lot of little things pretty well. And so the same thing is true with canoes. There is one type of canoe that is, has got the reputation of doing everything or a lot of things well, but none of them perfectly. And you know what it is? It's called a prospector. Prospector is not a name brand. It's a type of a canoe that has uh, a decent amount of rocker. Remember we talked about that. And it's sort of a classic design. Here up in Canada, it's, it's kind of the Canadian canoe. And uh, again, it doesn't do anything really well, but it does a lot of things pretty well. So that shape, the, the Prospector shape is used a lot for whitewater, but you'll want a fairly tough material on the hull, at least aluminum, if not T4 Max or something if you're in white water. If you're using it mostly in lake water, I, I, I don't know that I would get a prospector because you're going to have to do corrective strokes. Because of the rocker, a lot of the canoe is out of the water much of the time and the more of your canoe that's not touching the water, the more it's going to turn. So you're correcting your stroke all the time. You're doing a J stroke constantly. With this canoe, it doesn't need that. I, I don't do a corrective stroke more than once every three strokes, but with a prospector, it's going to be every single stroke. However, a prospector is good if you want some white water. This one is lousy for white water. I would never take it in white water. So you see, it's kind of a bit of a cross between everything. So a prospector, if you want a little bit of everything and, and not great at anything, Otherwise, if you know you're going to do one of those three things, recreation, whitewater, or lake tripping, get a canoe that is specifically meant for whitewater, recreation, or lake tripping.
Well, friends, I hope that video has been of some use to you and you've gleaned some information that you can use when you're looking for your next canoe. Whatever the case is, we're gonna be making these every week and I hope you do stop by and check out more of our videos. And until you see me again, guys, get out there, enjoy God's creation, just like this. And keep on looking up. Welcome everyone to day, uh, this style is just a white water or white or not. All right guys, I really appreciate you staying, uh, coming by. Uh.